This is the 2006 Saab 97X, and it is the best trailblazer you've never seen. That's right, the Saab 97X was built by GM and shares the same platform as the Trailblazer. Today, I'm going to show you why it's the best Trailblazer, as well as show you its interesting quirks and cool features. First, a little history. When GM bought Saab, they began rebadging GM products and selling them as Saab vehicles. Before the 97X, Saab only sold cars. To make Saab more appealing to the American markets, GM decided to make an SUV. It used the GMT 360 body-on-frame platform shared with the Chevy Trailblazer, GMC Envoy, Automobile Bravada, Isuzu Ascender, Buick Rainier, and even the Chevy SSR. The Saab 97X is the rarest of the bunch with only 19,000 of them made. The most popular variant, the Trailblazer, produced 1.6 million units. Even the SSR produced more units than the Saab 97X. The 97X was the luxury model of the lineup, and at that time was the second most expensive SUV produced by GM, second only to the Cadillac Escalade. This particular car is the base model and cost $41,340 new. The 97X was available in three trim levels, the 4.2i Linear, the 5.3i Arc, and the Arrow. The 4.2i featured a 4.2 liter Vortec in line 6, making 290 horsepower. The 5.3i featured a 5.3 liter V8, making 330 horsepower. And the Aero featured a 6.0 liter LS2 V8 out of a Corvette, making 390 horsepower. This one has the inline 6, delivering incredibly smooth yet powerful performance. It's well known for being a very good and a very reliable engine. The downside is that the engine only gets 14 miles per gallon city and 20 miles per gallon highway. All models came standard with all-wheel drive and 18-inch rims. The suspension had been dropped by one inch and stiffened to give a sportier feel. Because of this, it drives very well for an SUV, yet still maintains comfort. Moving to the review, starting on the outside, the 97X looks very similar to every other vehicle on the platform. Differences include the front bumper and grille, headlights, taillights, roof rack, and 18-inch wheels. While this car will win no beauty contests, it certainly is the best looking vehicle in the lineup. The first weird thing about this Saab is the hood gap. Look at this, it's big enough I can stick my hand in it. It stands out like a sore thumb. I find it hard to believe that when GM redesigned the front end, they couldn't have made that gap smaller. Next, this car has headlight washers. That way, if your headlights get dirty, two sprays from these little washers will clean them off, as well as cover the entire front end of the car in washer solution. And of course, when I go to film the video, they don't work. Figures. Moving up to the roof, this SUV has the side rails for a roof rack. They've taken particular care in making these look beautiful so they complement the look of the car. However, one thing they didn't offer? Crossbars. So, if you actually want to use your roof rack, you have to buy those big, ugly universal crossbars. Moving on to the inside. The first thing you notice is the key is in the center console where a cup holder would normally be. This is the same in all Saab vehicles and is done for a couple of reasons. The first is cited as a safety reason as traditional ignition key placement has the potential for knee injuries. The second is convenience as the current location is adjacent to the seatbelt buckle, handbrake, and gear lever. I personally love giving someone the key and watching their reaction when they can't find the ignition. Every screen in this car is green. Even the dials light up green at night. Some people hate this. I personally don't mind it and kind of like it. Here in the center console, you have buttons that control the info screen and the gauge cluster. These give you info about fuel consumption, mileage, and vehicle settings. There are two settings which I'll focus on. The first is curb view. This is a big vehicle and backing up can be challenging. Plus, with big 18 inch wheels, the last thing you want to do is to curb them. Curb view tilts the passenger side mirror downward, allowing you to see the ground while your car is backing up. The second is easy exit. This car comes with memory seats, which will save the positions of the seat, pedals, and mirrors. You can set an easy exit position to which the seat will go when you remove the key from the ignition. Alternatively, there is a button that serves the same purpose. The vents in this car are also different than any I've ever seen. Rather than being slats that slide or circles that rotate, it's a grid. You adjust it by tilting the center knob. 
which slides the grids around behind to aim the air. It looks a lot classier than the typical vents. Something else that's distinctly Saab, the swing out cup holder. Now this is the single worst cup holder I've ever seen. It's super flimsy, and trust me, if you put any drink taller than 4 inches, it will tip over. And trust me again when I say that passengers have worn their drinks on many occasions after a tight left turn. One problem that comes from Saab having gone the way of all the earth is that they no longer produce new parts, and that includes keys. Thankfully, the keys are the same across all GM vehicles of the period. Because of this, if you must get a new key, it will not say Saab, but rather it will be whatever they happen to have lying around. For example, I have one key that says GM, and another that has the Pontiac logo. I personally carry the Pontiac key, because if anybody ever steals my key, they will never find my car to steal it. That is, unless they've seen this video. The owner's manual for this car, like many luxury cars, comes in a fancy leather and cloth wrapped book. In this book, you not only find the owner's manual in a variety of pamphlets, but there's even an official Saab pen, the original business card from the dealer, and a keychain from the dealer as well. If you open up the owner's manual, for the most part it contains fairly standard information, but the illustrations are all copy-pasted from old manuals. On page 2-3, there's a caption that warns of leaving children alone in a car with the keys. In the illustration, there are two children in the front seat of a car. The child with the keys is reaching to start the car, but if you notice, he's reaching for the steering column. However, in this car, the ignition is in the center console between the seats. In fact, if you look, all the illustrations are from the 80s and 90s. They can't even decide on one car to use. If you go to page 4-15, there's another illustration of a vehicle that doesn't remotely resemble a 97X. On page 4-20, there's a GMC Jimmy. On page 4-23, there's a whole city packed with 90s Buick LeSabres. And it goes on, and on, and on. Moving to the back. This car has rear controls for audio and air. If you turn on the rear audio controls, the rear speakers turn off and sound is output through two headphone jacks. From there, passengers in the rear can select from CD, FM radio, and XM radio independently of the front. A separate volume knob for each headphone jack allows independent volume adjustment. For the air controls, you can turn off or on the air and adjust the fan speed and output location. The rear DVD entertainment system is mounted in the roof. The screen folds down and sound can be routed through the car speakers or through three infrared wireless headphones. A remote is also provided in addition to the buttons on the ceiling. If you want to hook up an external video source, RCA ports are provided. The only problem with the entertainment system is that when it's in use, you can't see out the rear view mirror. Finally, heading to the rear of the car, you can see that this vehicle has a lot of space. With the seats folded down, there's 80.1 cubic feet of cargo space. Because the 97X came standard with rear air suspension, it has an air compressor. But rather than simply use the compressor for the suspension, they did something truly brilliant and made it accessible for filling up tires. It even came with adapters for balls and other inflatables. Now that I've shown you around the Saab 97X, it's time to take it for a drive. first things you notice about driving this car is just how uh, high up you are. You know, it may just be a mid-size SUV, but it is still quite high up on the road. Now this car is the luxury version of Chevrolet's Trailblazer. Um, this is meant to be a little bit sportier, a little bit more luxurious, and it really does that. Um, one evidence of that is that the car sits a little bit lower. Um, than its Trailblazer counterparts. And because of that, it handles a little bit better and it also has a little bit less body roll. It really does ride quite well and soaks up the bumps uh, pretty pretty good. Uh, especially the, the quality of these seats, you really um, do have a comfortable ride. Steering feels really good on this car. Uh, unlike most SUVs, most SUVs they feel too light, 
Um, they're over assisted and they really you know take away the feel of actually driving the car you know it's very it's meant to be easy and in a lot of cases you want that because you're towing trailers you're you know your are you're you know you're working you don't want to have that with you all the time but this is meant to feel a little more luxurious feel a little better when you drive it than the average trailblazer and the average SUV and so the the steering really does feel feel great it's really tight. Uh, there's all there's you know almost no um, on center vagueness on this car. Um, it's very direct. You can really feel that when you turn the car, it goes. Um, it's not just kind of a disconnected, you know, video game type feel. When you just you know you turn a really light steering wheel, it feels like a video game. Now uh, this you you feel it turning, and it feels like you're actually telling the car where to go and the car responds and you feel very connected to the road. I really like the steering wheel, the control placement is nice. One of the benefits of this being a shared platform, there are plenty of parts. This is one of the most popular SUVs from that time period. There are tons of parts, especially for the drivetrain. The drivetrain is the exact same as all the other six-cylinder SUVs that GM made on this platform. So the drivetrain parts are really cheap. Uh, this drivetrain is incredibly reliable and it really is a great platform for this car to be on. The downside, however, is that because this car is the most rare of this platform, any specialty pieces that are specific to this car like the headlights the front bumper the back bumper and um, anything that says Saab on it is uh, very expensive and hard to come by because Saab is as we all know dead but you know that's a small price you have to pay for the reliability of the drivetrain the comfort of the drive the way it feels uh, the uh, amenities on the inside um, overall it's a great car I have no plans on selling this I hope to have this car until you know it has three, four, five hundred thousand miles. The 4.2 liter six cylinder inline engine in this car is very quiet. Um, I love this engine. It is so smooth when you're stopped, you can't tell that this car is running because that's smooth. You can't even feel the vibrations from it because it's perfectly balanced. Um, even when you're driving, you generally can't hear the engine unless you are really hard on the gas. And when you are really hard on the gas, it does sound quite good. Um, for a stock exhaust system, I'm quite impressed with how good this car sounds. Here, give it a listen. It sounds really good, and I quite enjoy it. Um, you know, I obviously don't get on it that much, but when I do, it, it certainly sounds the part. The acceleration is quite good. Um, it's not fast by any means but it is more than enough to get you where you need to go as fast as you need to go. Um, if you went with uh, the other models, you were able to get a V8, a 5.3 liter V8. Uh, and that one had a bit more power and a bit more torque, um, but really there wasn't too much of a power difference between the two. And with how silky smooth this inline six is, I don't know that I would choose the V8 to be perfectly honest. But you know, if you're looking for an SUV that is comfortable, reliable, and has quite a few features on it, you know, this is this is the car for you. It's checks it checks all of those boxes. It's reliable, it's comfortable, uh, it looks pretty good, it's you know, has all the creature comforts that you need, minus the very latest technologies. You know, this car is 12 years old, but it really doesn't feel 12 years old. Uh, and if you can find one with a good service history and lower miles, you know, it would make a great car. You can pick these things up, you know, depending on, on again, mileage, service history, and things like that, for anywhere from, you know, five to $8,000, and I think it's worth every penny.